Okay, now we're going to look at naming some cycloalkanes. And this will be our first example. With naming cycloalkanes, the rules are a tiny bit different, but not, not totally different. I'm just going to add a couple steps and take a couple steps out. So still, our first step is to find the parent chain, the longest chain of carbons. With a cycloalkane, the parent chain is either going to be the ring or something that's hanging off of the ring. You cannot go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and make that your longest parent chain. You can't mix and match. It either has to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or it has to be 1, 2, 3, 4. In this case, the ring is the longest chain of carbon atoms and that means that this is our substituent. Again, sometimes students get confused about who this carbon belongs to. Is this carbon part of the ring or is it part of the substituent? This carbon atom within the ring is part of the ring, counted as part of the ring. It's not part of the substituent. If that carbon wasn't there, it wouldn't be a ring, right? So it counts as part of the ring. So step number two, identify and name the substituents. We already found the substituents. This is a four carbon substituent, which is called butyl. If you are still confused about where I'm coming up with these names, they are in table 4.2 of your book on page 143 or table 4.1 on page 141, not or, and. Uh, step number three is to number the carbon atoms in the parent chain to give the substituent the lowest possible numbers. Now, when we were doing this with straight chains, the numbering process was pretty straightforward. We had a chain, and we were numbering from either left to right or right to left. We had a beginning, and we had an end, and we were just looking to see which direction to go. We don't have a beginning and an end in a ring, so it's hard to tell where to start and where to stop. However, our objective is still the same, and that is to number the carbon atoms to give the substituents the lowest possible number. That means, in the case of a ring, we get to choose what we call carbon number one and number accordingly. Since our goal is to put the substituent on the lowest possible number, our substituent is going to be on carbon number one, and we're going to go around the ring with the rest of the numbers. Uh, alphabetization doesn't apply because we only have one substituent. So this molecule's name is butyl, oops, butyl cyclohexane. Cyclo is the prefix for ring. And we are going to use that prefix to distinguish, distinguish a six-membered ring from a six-membered straight chain. So a six-membered straight chain is just hexane. A six-membered ring is cyclohexane. Uh, a five-membered chain is pentane. A five-membered ring is cyclopentane. And that's it. You'll notice that I did not locate the substituent at the beginning of the name like we do in a straight chain, 3-ethyl, for example. For a mono-substituted ring, a ring with only one substituent on it, the number one is implied in the name because, remember, we get to choose where the numbering starts on the ring. We're always going to put the substituent on carbon number one, so we don't really need to say it if we don't want to. This is only for a mono-substituted ring. The number one can be implied. It's an option to leave the number one off. You don't have to leave the number one off. You, um, you can never leave the number one off of a straight chain alkane name. Never. And you can never leave the number one off when you're naming a ring if it has multiple substituents. You can only leave it off if it's a ring with one substituent. And if that confuses you, and if you're feeling panicky and worried that you're going to not remember when to include the one and when to not, just always include the one. It's not wrong to say one butyl cyclohexane. It's just a little bit, I don't know, a little bit redundant. But it's not wrong. So there's that. 
let's do another example. So um, here again, we're going to find the longest chain of carbon atoms, and it's either going to be the ring, which is a six-membered ring, or it's going to be not the ring, which is a one-carbon substituent or a one-two-three carbon chain or a one-two-three carbon chain. Either way, the six-membered ring wins, so we're looking at uh, another cyclohexane. Our substituents are here and here. This substituent we've seen before, that's methyl, the one carbon substituent. This substituent is complex. Remember back a couple uh, videos ago, I defined a com complex substituent as a branched substituent or a substituent with its own substituent. This little guy is a three carbon substituent with a methyl group hanging off of the middle of it. So that guy is complex. That's not its name. That's just what it is. You have to memorize the common names of the three and four carbon complex substituents. They are in three boxes, not in a table, just in three boxes on page 146. Oh, you know what? No, they're actually only in two boxes because one box has the three carbon substituents and one box has the four carbon substituents and one box has five carbon substituents, but I don't need you to name those, just the threes and the fours. So complex substituents have common names and they also have um, IUPAC names as well. This little guy's common name is isobutyl. It's IUPAC name is a little bit more um, complicated, so we're not going to worry about it right now. So to name this molecule, uh, where are we at? We're on step number three. Number the carbon atoms in the parent chain, giving the substituents the lowest possible numbers. So we're going to, we want to call one of these number one and the other one number two. And either way we go, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here we have a tie. What do you do in the case of a tie? In the case of a tie, like in this case where it's going to be 1, 2, or it's going to be 1, 2, the 1 goes to the substituent that comes first alphabetically, and the 2 goes to the substituent that comes second alphabetically. So here, isobutyl comes before methyl alphabetically. So this is going to be carbon number one, and this is two, and then around the ring we go. So this molecule's name is 1-isobutyl, 2-methyl cyclohexane. Because this uh, this cyclohexane has two substituents on it, you cannot leave the one off. It has got to be there, even though it's implied. And if I left it off, you would know what I was talking about, but you just, you just can't do that. It's just not allowed, not okay. 